so good evening students uh, today we will start with another phylum in animal kingdom so far we have completed uh, the lower invertebrates that is uh, phylum porifera uh, phylum cylindrata phylum tenophora and yesterday we have completed the platyhelminthes and nematyhelminthes so in today class uh, we will uh, complete the entire uh, phylum annelida and we also study the type study of uh, animal earthworm Okay, now let's begin with phylum Annelida. So this is actually Greek word, the Annelida. The first time the term Annelida is coined by scientist Lamarck. You know, the Lamarck is very important scientist in evolution, and this is the scientist. He named the term as Annelida. Okay. So the annelida means the annulus, annulus, which means they are ring-like structures. Okay, we see all the animals in this group. You know they are having some sort of rings. We can see the rings over their body. Ring-like structures. Okay, the main character when we thinking of earthworm or any leeches, the what comes in our brain that is metamers. Okay, the segmented body. So this group of animals they start showing this metamerism. Okay, the metamerism, metameric segmentation we can call them, and. So, if you see the fundamental characters, they are triploblastic. We have seen yesterday the platyhelminthes and nematyhelminthes, they are also triploblastic. And so, from platyhelminthes to all the animals, up to cartets, they are all triploblastic. They have three germ layers that is endoderm, mesoderm, and the ectoderm. And this shows the bilateral symmetry. And this is the first group started showing this true coelom. True coelom. We can say, we can tell them as a true coelomates, u coelomates, okay? And the coelom is shaijo coelom. Cytoshelum. So, cytoshelum means when mesoderm splits into pouches. Okay. So, if you see, this is the mesoderm. If it is splits, and this is the endoderm, and this is, this is the ectoderm. If the mesoderm splits into pouches, then we say it is cytoshelum. Okay. In this particular group, and phylum Annelida and Arthropoda, they are Arthropoda, even mollusk, they are Shaijoshilomates. So, from hemi, uh, Echinodermata and the Cordex, they are Enterocilomates. Enterocilomates means the mesoderm opens into mouth and the anus. Okay? Please remember this group, the start, they started showing the true silo and the the mesoderm, the coelom, whatever the uh, cavity between the gut and the body wall, and it is opened in a pouches line. Okay, then these pouches are built by the mesoderm. And this cavity, you know, the coelom, which is filled by shigocelomic fluid, shigocelomic fluid. So, the fluid which is there in the shigocelom, it is actually uh, giving like a structure to the body. Okay, Though they do not have the skeletal system, but the shigocelom, uh, which, is, which is acting like a skeleton uh, of the body. Okay, and hydrostatic, hydrostatic skeleton. Is acting like hydros 
static skeleton. Very important. Okay. Now we will see very strong developments over lower phylums. They also shows this organ system level of organization. Okay. And the first time we started seeing something circulatory system here. Okay. The circulatory system is well developed. There is a circulatory fluid and the fluid is revolves in a vessels. And the first time we are seeing the formation of blood vessels and the blood vessels are filled with the blood. Okay. And we are seeing the closed circulatory system. We are seeing vessels and these vessels are having the contractable ability and the vessels are having some walls also. Okay. And they are interconnected. And all these features we see in this uh, particular class of uh, particular phylum. Okay. Closed circulatory system. Closed circulatory system with blood. Okay. And the first time we are seeing the blood, that too in red color. Okay. That is also a unique feature of this uh, phylum Annelida. And we also see the excretory structures, nephrons, sorry, nephridia. So these are the unique characters of the uh, phylum Annelida. Now let us see the general characters. So the body is divides into segments. So we call them as metamias. Okay. The each part, each segment we call it as metamere. And they separated by septum. Now, if you see the body wall, it is body wall has three parts. One is outer cuticle. And the middle part epidermis and inner muscular layer and now there are two types of muscles in the inner layer of the body wall that is longitudinal so yesterday we have seen in uh, phylum Matty Helminthes, Aski Helminthes, there is only longitudinal muscles are present in the inner layer. But when coming to the annelids, along with longitudinal, there is circular muscles also. Circular muscles. The two types of muscles are present here. Now, the entire body, it is divided into three parts. One is prostromium. And the trunk. And the posterior part, we call it as pygerium. Pygerium. Okay. And if you see the body, for example, the body of 
at the bottom. So the anterior opening, we call them as mouth, there is a small opening here. And in the middle part of this trunk, there are special cells are present. Okay, in the middle part of the trunk. These are called teloblastic cells. So teloblastic cells, they start producing the new metamers. Okay. So every segment is divided by the septum with other both internally as well as externally. It is completely different from the segment to the segment. Okay. They divide by the internal segmental septum. Okay. It is septum is not something like line, it is a complete division from the metamere to the metamere. Okay. And they develop from the teloblastic cells which are present in the middle part of the trunk. So from there the new uh, metamers will start growing. Okay. That is very important. Now if you see the habitat, they are mostly free living. Free living. Very few are parasitic. Very few are parasitic. So example like leeches. Leeches are parasites. Okay. Now let us go to the systems. Digestive system is a well developed complete digestive system. It's complete digestive system with glands. With glands and the important point is here, we started seeing stomach here, okay, stomachs, stomach and giza. So yesterday we have seen the, there is a tubular pharynx and there is an esophagus and the intestine we have seen. There is no stomach in case of the Aske helminthes. And this is the first group, they started showing the stomach and even giza. This is the unique character. Look, the gizzard we can see in the phylum Annelida and Arthropoda later on in birds. Okay. No other structure, no other animals are having the gizzard. Only these three phylums are showing this gizzard structure. But stomach is present from uh, annelid to the uh, all the way up to the cortex. Okay. Now the respir respiratory system. So generally respiration happens through body wall, simple diffusion. So the first time the respiratory structures are seen in polychaetas, okay. polychaeta, polychaeta, we are like nearest, the structures are called parapodia. Parapodia. Now, parapodia is helpful for the locomotion as well as the respiration. And this is the first respiratory structures we are seeing. So, in earlier phylums, we have not seen any respiratory, respiratory structures, and the respiration was happened through only body wall, simple uh, diffusion. In case of the porphyrins, we have seen direct uh, through the canal system. Okay. But cylindrate, tenophore, platy, and nematy helminth is do the respiration happens through the body wall only. And in case of analytics, also mostly it is happens with the body wall only. And there is a separate class, saligokita, sorry, polychaeta. Polychaeta, they start showing the respiratory structures 
that is parapodia okay and that is very important and excretory system with nephridia there are special structures we call it as nephridia there are three types one is septal nephridia they are present at the septums and there are integumental nephridias they are beneath the skin and there are pharyngeal nephridias so they are around the pharyngeal okay now the excretory product mostly ammonia in case of aquatic animals and in terrestrial we find urea the earthworm uh, whenever it is in aquatic condition you know, they start releasing this ammonia when they are in the soil dry condition they start releasing urea and this is the animals you know they secret depends on the habitat the single animal very important and the circulatory system is well developed circulatory system is well developed the close close type of circulatory system having vessels and these vessels are with valves and they are contractible contractible vessels and circulatory fluid is blood and this blood it is in red in color because it also has the hemoglobin but hemoglobin dissolved in plasma and no rbc cells okay no rbc cells remember then blood is in red color but the hemoglobin dissolved in the plasma no rbc cells in uh, analytes Okay, and there are some cells, you no know, phagocytes. They are basically lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Okay. Now the nervous system is moderately developed, as like. ascii helminthes and there is no difference between the nervous nervous system uh in case of ascii helminthes and annelida these animals also shows the circum pharyngeal ganglionic nerve ring nerve ring on ventral side ventral nerve cord but there are sensory organs <coughs> sensory organs are they uh, in case of nerves the nerves belongs to palikita and they shows eyes one pair of eyes they can show so generally on the body wall there are sensory st structures on body wall there are sensory cells okay so this is a uh, some more sensory organs are slightly uh, evolved when compared to the phylum nematihelminthes okay the reproduction so mostly they are hermaphrodites hermaphrodites and the polychaetes on the only polychaetes Polychaetes are 
Okay, polykids are unisexual, and so their hermaphrodites means they are having both male and female gametes. But the female gam male gametes develops first. Develops first, then female. So this condition we call it as protandrous. Protandrous. If the female gametes develops first, we call it as protogyny. But in case of this analyx, the male gametes they are having both male and female gametes, but the male gametes develops first. So that condition we call it as protandrous. Okay, and <coughs> they prefer cross fertilization. Though they are having the both the gametes in their body, but the inter fertilization will not happen as like uh, platyhelminthes and nematyhelminthes. But these are prefers the cross fertilization. And development is direct. The development is direct, but in polychaetes, the nearies, okay, polychaetes are having the indirect development. They are having a larval stage, which is known as prokopor larva. Prokopor larva. So these are the general characters of the analytes. Analytes are far, far better than the lower invertebrates. So that is the reason we take uh, earthworm as a type study. Okay, we see many developments in invertebrates, and we also see the cockroach as a type study because the cockroach is much uh, having better adaptations when compared to the lower uh, animals. So that's the reason we take uh, earthworm as well as the cockroach as a type studies. Okay. So now we'll, let us begin with the uh, earthworm. Now, uh, now we'll start with type study of earthworm. In India, there are two important species for earthworm. So they are known as the Peritima species. Peritima species, and there is one more species that is Lumbricus. Lumbrica species. These are two important species in India. Okay. So now there is metamerism is present throughout the body. Okay. The metameric segmentation we can see both internally as well as the externally. And externally. So, in earthworm, there are 100 to 120 segments, not less than 100, not more than 120. There is a range 100 to 120, very important. Now, earthworm are triploblastic, cytosylomate. Having a bilateral symmetry, symmetry. Okay. Now, so we will in type study we will study two aspects. One is an external morphology, and we will see internal anatomy. All the systems, digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system, excretory system, nervous system, and reproductive system. So, whatever visible to us with our naked eye, so that we call it as the morphology, external features. So, when we dissect and we will see certain system that we call it as internal anatomy. Okay? The histology is something like when you use microscope and you will see the structures, then we call it as histology. Okay? So, 
as per our ncert so we are going through the external features and the internal structures the internal anatomy of uh, this earthworm to understand various aspects okay now let us begin uh, with external morphology So, earthworm, it is, it looks like brownish, light brownish color because the first time we are saying it has a skin. So, no animals, earlier phylums, platyhelminthes or nematyhelminthes, we doesn't call them as a skin because on the body wall there is no any, there is no pigment at all. But these animals, you know, they started showing some colors on their skin. So that's the reason we are calling them as, uh, calling them as skin. Okay. These earthworms are light brownish in color. There are many colors universally, but in India, most common is the peritima species and the lumbricus species. They are light, light brownish in color. This is because in the body wall there is a pigment which is called as poor pyrosin. Poor pyrosin. Okay. So that is the reason it is brownish in color, light brownish in color. The pigment is poor pyrosin. Okay. Now we'll see on three ways. One is on dorsal side. First, we'll see on the dorsal side what are the structures we can see. So, the first segment has an opening, we call it as mouth, then followed by the segments. Let me label this one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, So continue like like this. So <coughs> so every segment, okay. This every segment we call it as metamers. Every segment, each segment we call it as metamere and they are separated by the internal and external groove we call them as septum okay septum now from the first segment till end there is a mid dorsal line Okay. So, because of this line, we can easily differentiate uh, what is ventral side and what is dorsal side. Okay. And this line, we call it as, it is exactly in the middle of the dorsal side. We call them as mid dorsal line. Mid dorsal line. And the 14, 15, 16 segment is covered by the mucus layer and we call them as clitellum. Clitellum. Okay, so that's the reason we won't, we are not able to see the dorsal line in this 14, 15, 16 segment. So, dorsal line except clitellum, it is present all over the body on the mid dorsal. Okay. 
okay now from 12 segment to till end in the middle of every segment on the dorsal line there is a pores okay and it is not present in the clitellum part also again 17 18 19 20 so on till the end there are pores from whenever the earthworm irritated irritated by the external factor and the silomic fluid the cytosilomic fluid which is there in the body that oozes out okay and it is not present in the clitellum part so the dorsal pores are present from 12 segment to the till last segment and whenever the earthworm irritates and the silomic fluid oozes out okay that is very important and every segment not only on the dorsal side ventral side lateral side total uh, the segment the circular segment they have supported by chitinous structure chitinous structure we call it as setae setae it is yes shape chitinous structure and they embedded in the skin okay the embedded in skin it can come out also it is very helpful for the locomotion so whenever earthworm want to move these setae structures actually holds okay with the help of longitudinal and the uh, circular muscles this ct also actually they are making as a grip okay it is present all over the body ct so they are not present in the first segment mouth and the anus ct is present except mouth anus and clitellum this is where we we only found this clitellum in this 14 15 16 segment the other segments okay the we don't find any other structures in the dorsal side okay even the dorsal line even the dorsal pores even the ct okay that is important now we'll see what are the structures on the ventral side One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So on the ventral side, the fourteen segment, there is a single opening. So there is a clitellum also. So we can find on the ventral side this opening. and this opening is called as the female genital pore in 18 segment there is one pair they are the ventrolateral side okay they are in the sides there are one pair these are called the male reproductive male genital pore pores in 17 and 19 there is accessory structures we call them as copulatory papillae 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 okay these these only these structures we can find on the 
ventral side the ct is present all over the body it is present in the dorsal side ventral side and the lateral side and clitellum also present the clitellum also is present on the ventral side okay please make a note of it uh, on the lateral side this is lateral So in six, seven, eighth, ninth segment, there is every segment there is one pair of balloon-like structures. So they are present in six, seven, eight, and ninth segment. Every segment has one pair, but they attached at at septum. Okay, they open at septum. Okay. Now the first pair at five, six septum, and the second pair is at six and seven, and third pair at seven and eight, and this is eight and nine. So these structures are called as spermatotheca. Spermatotheca. And the openings are called as spermatothecal pores. Spermatothecal pores. So very important. Need they will confuse you. So where is the first pair? Where is the second pair? Where is the third pair? And where is the fourth pair? And they will also ask you the spermatothecal pores. So whenever they are asking spermatothecal pores, you should be very specific. The first pair opens at uh, five and six. Uh, the second spermatothecal pore at six and seven. Third is uh, seven and eight, and the last one is an eight and nine. Okay. The, whenever they are asking spermatotheca, they are present in six, seven, eight, nine. Spermatothecal pore means that they open at five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine. Okay. Very important. This external features. Uh, make a list out where what are the structures we can find out on the dorsal side and the ventral side and the lateral side. Okay, now we'll start with the internal anatomy and we'll start with the different systems now. The first system we will discuss the digestive system. So digestive system is very well developed in case of uh, earthworms and it is a straight tube. Okay, straight tube as like ASCII helminthes. Because this is the only animal, no? we see the length of the earthworm and the alimentary canal is almost same. But in case of human beings, our digestive system length is very far, far longer than the, our body. Even in case of cockroaches also, any other animals. And this is a very straightened uh, tube we will find in case of uh, earthworms. Now digestive system. This is, I'm, I'm straight away drawing the digestive system. So the anterior opening, we call them as mouth. So before mouth, there is a muscular structure which is called as prostromium. And prostromium is acts like a sensory, sensory structure, okay, sensory organ. 
Now the mouth, oh, it, it is in segment one, and it leads to the oral cavity, buccal cavity. Buccal cavity is present in first segment. It starts with first segment to third segment. The segments are very very important. Then there is a tubular pharynx. And the pharynx at fourth segment. And it leads to the esophagus. And esophagus is five to seven. And this, the tubular gizzard, it is a eighth segment. And then narrow stomach. In case of earthworms, the stomach is narrow, and the intestine is the wider one. But in case of higher animals like human beings, the stomach is a wider part. Intestine is a narrow part. Please understand this. Okay? This is stomach. It is nine to fourteen segment, and this is intestine. Intestine starts from fifteen to n. Fifteen to n. On twenty sixth segment, this is twenty sixth when there is an extension. Okay, this is called as intestine, intestinal CK. On twenty sixth segment, and it ends with anus on the last segment. Okay, now from twenty sixth segment. Till last, the intestine it is folded to increase the area of absorption, and this we call it as typhosol. It is not present in the last twenty-four, twenty-five segments. So, if you see the entire worm, the last part. Last twenty-four segments, this typhosol is not present. Twenty-four or twenty-five. Sometimes they will say twenty-four. Sometimes they will say twenty-five. It is starts from the anterior twenty-six segment and it ends just before twenty-four segments. Means last twenty-four segments or last twenty-five segments, they do not show this typhosol. Very important. The twenty-six segment is intestinal CK. And the sixth segment is gizzard. Stomach is nine to fourteen. Intestine starts from fifteen uh, segment to the till end. There is no small intestine, digest uh, large intestine. Only one intestine. It runs from fifteen to end. But from twenty six segments, the internal grooving, the so internal foldings are there. These are called as typhosol. They actually, you know, they increase the area of absorption. And it is not present even the last twenty-four and twenty-five segments, and that is very important. Okay, yeah. So there are glands. There are glands around the pharynx. These are called the pharyngeal glands. There are around pharynx, pharyngeal glands. They secrete music. As well as amylase, amylase protease, all these things. Okay, with the help of mucin, the whatever it swallows and it moves to the down parts. Okay, protease is very important for the protein metabolism. Amylase is very important for the uh, carbohydrate metabolism. There is no lipases in this. Digestive glands. Okay, the intestinal CK. 
they also release amylase okay it does, there are two kinds of uh, glands one is pharyngeal glands and intestinal ck so they also release amylase okay the earthworm you no know, it throws undigested food which is having the very carbon containing nutrition and which is that is very helpful for the uh, plants so that's the reason we call them as the worm cast we call we call them as the vermi compost and it we consider the earthworms are the friends of the farmers okay very important so now we'll move on to the next system uh, that is circulatory system the circulatory system something started in this phylum annelida and we can see very clear close type of circulatory system in earthworm circulatory system so in case of earthworms this is close type close type so there are vessels here okay now so let me draw the digestive system then we will draw the circulatory system this is the pharynx and this is the esophagus and this is a gizzard and this is a narrow stomach we draw it in long and there are many structures over here and then okay now from posterior from the last segment to anterior there is very dense vessel which is coming and it is joining at the segment 2 and this vessel we call it as dorsal vessel Okay, this vessel, dorsal vessel, and it starts from posterior to anterior. Very important. So the pulsation, even the blood flow, happens from back to the front, posterior to the anterior. Okay, that is one of the characteristic features of the invertebrates. We see the blood flow from even in cockroaches it starts from last segment to the uh, head region in case of earthworms also the blood flows from back to front okay the posterior end to the anterior end and with the, this vessel on the dorsal side it is it has valves so every segment so this is a segment just before that there are valves for example this is a blood vessel and just before the segment there are valves okay and this is contractile so it can contract because of the pulsatile contract okay it starts from posterior and slowly there is a peristaltic movement so the blood flows from posterior to anterior okay it is actually it is acting like heart okay we are not calling them as heart because there is no circular structure but the pulsation starts from posterior to the anterior because this is the first time we are seeing the valves vessels and the something the vessels are contracting okay that's the reason it's a very unique the earthworm type study is very unique we see so many uh, advanced features in this uh, earthworm okay the posterior and it has valves and it is contractible okay now from second segment to till end there is one more vessel these are the two main vessels very big vessels and this vessel is called as ventral vessel so ventral vessels it starts from anterior to posterior 
anterior to the posterior and no valves here and it is non contractible so only one valve one vessel in earthworm that is having the valves and the contraction contractible okay that is the dorsal vessel okay and this is the ventral vessel it starts from anterior to the posterior blood also flows from anterior to posterior in case of dorsal vessel it starts it starts from posterior and it comes to anterior there are two vessels which are connecting these two the dorsal vessel and the ventral vessel these are called as lateral hearts so they are present at 7 and 9 segment that's the reason i have drawn just behind the uh, gizzard okay they are present at 7th and 9th segment they call as lateral hearts from ninth segment okay from here ninth segment to 14th segment okay this here can you see this is this is the intestine start from 15th segment so let me write here 14th segment so 9 to 14th segment on the above alimentary canal so there is one vessel which is called as supra esophageal supra esophageal vessel okay now there are one pair which is coming from second segment to 14th segment Okay, on the, it is actually on the lateral side, so we can't draw here. So that's why I'm bringing this down. There are two. One is this side and one is on other side. Please understand this. Second segment to fourteen segment, there is one vessel which is going in this. We call it as lateral esophagus. Lateral esophagus. vessel and there are two in number okay one pair and this supraesophageal is only one but the lateral esophageal there are two in number they starts from second segment to the 14th segment now there are two more hearts which are connecting this this dorsal this dorsal as well as this sub supraesophageal okay and they are connecting with ventral okay there is one more so they are present in 12 and 13 segment 12 and 13 segment these are called lateral esophageal hearts they are present in 12 and 13 segment okay now this lateral esophageal uh, vessel they are present second segment to 14th segment lateral hearts are there in 7th and 9th segment and the ventral second segment second to till end and this ventral is from end to second segment the supra esophageal from 9 to 14 segment okay now there are anterior loops which are connecting this Which are connecting this supraesophageal as well as this 
lateral esophagus okay they are present in 10 and 11 okay. draw these are called anterior loops they are present in 10 and 11 segment okay now from 15 segment to till n there is a vessels which are connecting uh, dorsal and the ventral these are called as commissures commissures okay. okay now let us list out all the vessels with segment numbers okay the first one is ventral vessel n2 second sorry dorsal ventral second to tibial okay now there are two hearts which are connecting the dorsal and ventral they are called as lateral hearts it also called as aorta lateral hearts they are present at 7th and 9th and there is a small vessel above the elementary canal we call it as supraesophageal it is present from 9 to 14 segment okay now there is a vessel which is coming from second segment to 14 segment that is called lateral esophageal they are two in number so they are present from second to 14 segment then there is a hearts which are connecting the dorsal supraesophageal and the ventral they are called lateral esophageal hearts so where they are present they are present in 12 and 13 segment now there is a commissures sorry there is a anterior loops so anterior loops they connect supraesophageal as well as this lateral esophageal so they are present at 10 and 11 and the commissures so which are present from 15 segment to till n so they connects the dorsal and the ventral vessels the 15 to n so these are these are the vessels in particular segments so very important so if you see the dorsal one is a very dense and large it has valves and it, it is the only vessel which is contractible and the blood flows from posterior end to the anterior end and this is which is lying on the ventral side very long from second to the till end that is the ventral vessel and the two hearts are connecting uh, with the dorsal and ventral they are present at 7th and 9th segment so they connect dorsal and the ventral vessels okay and there is a small vessel from 9 to 14 segment which is above the elementary canal we call them as supraesophageal vessel and they are present 9 to 14 and there is one more vessel just uh sides of the digestive system so there are two in number both the sides back side and front side we call them as lateral esophagus and that is starts from second to the 14th segment now there is a hearts which are connecting the dorsal ventral as well as the supraesophageal we call them as lateral esophageal hearts they are present in 12 and 13 segment now there is small vessels which are connecting the supraesophageal as well as the lateral esophagus and they are called as the anterior loops they are present in 10 and 11 segment 
and after 15 every segment we find there is vessels which are connecting the dorsal and the ventral they are called as the commissures so very important the circulatory system you need to practice periodically so they will all of a sudden they will give a in a neat exam they will be giving a match most of the time matching sometimes they will give a diagram and they will ask you the with the segment numbers okay Now we will move on to the respiratory system. The respiratory system is very simple in case of earthworms. So it respirates through body wall. Okay. There is no special structures in earthworm. And excretory system. There is special structures for excretory, we call it as nephridia. So nephridia has a funnel like funnel and it has cilia around it and this opening we call it as nephridios stone. Okay, then it is narrow neck, then it leads to point tube. So this entire part we call it as neck. And this is the opening, we call it as nephridio pore. This is nephridio strobe. Nephridio pore. This is a typical structure of the nephridia. Now, in earthworm, there are three types of nephridia. As I told you, that uh, one is septal nephridia. So they are present from 15 segments, 15 segments, for example, let me draw this, this is the 15 segment, always you should write the segment number in the middle, you should not write in the septum, okay, and this is the 16 segment, so on, this is the 17 segment, this is 18 segment, so this starts from 15 segment. Okay, here and 16 segment. It starts from 15, 16 segment till N. Okay. So every segment, so here 40 to 50. So in 15 segment, there is only 40 to 50, okay? But when coming to the 16 segment, this side 40 to 50, this side 40 to 50. So total 80 to 100. From 16 segment onwards, every segment has this 80 to 100 septal nephridia. Very important, okay? It starts from 15 segment. But 15 segment, only one side it will have. They open into elementary canal. That's the reason we call them as enterophilia. Okay, very important in neat and neat. So most of the time, instead of asking the type of nephridia, they will ask which one is an enterophilia. Which one is an ex, uh, exonephric? Which exonephric is present in the thought segment? Like that, they will ask. So, you should have a clear understand that. So, how their arrangement, what is their number, where they are located, everything. Okay. Now, the second one is integumental nephridia. So, they start from third segment. Okay. Third segment to till end. So every segment there are 
250. Okay, there are 200 to 250. And in clitellum, so there are this number will increase exponentially that is 2000 to 2500. That's the reason we call them as forest of nephilia. Okay, forest of nephilia. And the third type, so this, uh, sorry, integumental nephridia, they opens out okay, beneath the skin. Okay, that's the reason we call them as exonephridia. So one more important, integumental nephridia, they do not have this nephridiostome part. They will have the simple neck and the nephridio pore. Okay, this is, this is not typical one. The typical one is the septal nephridia. The nephridia has a complete structure, okay, very important. And the third type is pharyngeal nephridia. So they are present around this pharynx, pharyngeal nephridia. So they are present at four, fifth, sixth segment only. Their number is not uh, constant, they are present as a clusters, okay. Now this also opens into the the esophagus. That's why we call it as enterophilic enterophilia. So out of this three nephridia, the septal nephridia is a typical one. Okay, typical one. Other two are non-typical. Okay, they don't doesn't have this nephridial stone. And if you see the out of these three. The septal nephridia and the pharyngeal nephridia, they opens into the alimentary canal. Whereas integumental nephridia, they opens at the skin outside. So that's why we call them as exonephridia. Other two are the enteronephridia. If you see the number wise, it starts from uh, septal nephridia starts from 15 segment. But in 15 segment, it is only towards the one side septum. Okay. From 16 segment to the till end, every segment will have 80 to 100. But in 15 segment, only 40 to 50. Integumental nephridia starts from top to till end. So every segment 200 to 250. In case of clitellum, it is 2000 to 2050. That's the reason we call them as forest of nephridia. And pharyngeal nephridia, the number is not constant. They are in clusters. Okay. And we call them as enteronephridia. They are present in fourth and fifth. So they will be asking what type of nephridia are present at the third segment. It is absolutely integumental nephridia. Okay. So the, sometimes they will be asking um, the only nephridia, only exonephridia in in one segment. Okay. The single segment which is having the only one kind of nephridia that is. Uh, nothing but integumental nephridia. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now moving, we'll move on to the reproductive system. So the earthworms are hermaphrodites. They are bisexual. Both male and female sexual organs are present in all the earthworms. Okay. Now we'll start with male reproductive system and the female reproductive system, then we'll see the population. Male reproductive system. I am straight away drawing the segments which is what are present the reproductive structures.
so in 10th segment there is one pair of 10th and 11th segment okay 10 10 segment one pair and 11 segment also one pair okay so there is one pair of testes at 10th segment and 11th segment these are called the testes now they embed in sac like structure and these are called the testicular sac and it is filled with the fluid now whatever the uh, sperms which is released by the testes and the testicular sac it is captured by funnel and this funnel is known as seminal funnel seminal funnel it has cilia and these are called seminal funnel so in 10th and 11th segment so there is a one pair of uh, testes and one pair of uh, seminal uh, testicular sac and one pair of seminal funnels okay now in 11th and 12th segment okay there is seminal vesicles these are glands the first pair at 11th and 12th pair in second one so 12th segment in second one and the 12th seminal vesicle is larger than the 11th segment seminal vesicle so these are called the seminal vesicle okay now there is a duct which is coming from seminal vesic uh, funnel and they connect to this the subsequent seminal vesicle this also connects here so the 11th segment seminal funnel which connects to the 11th segment seminal vesicle okay the whatever the sperms uh, spermatogonia which is released by the testes they will mature in the seminal vesicle the function of this gland is the maturation of the semen uh, spurs okay now the ducts which is coming downwards these are called the vas differentia so there are four ducts from each seminal vesicle and the seminal funnel it goes up to 13 18 segment here one so these ducts are called as vas deferens okay so from 16 to 19 or 17 to 20 okay there is a prostate gland the prostate gland will secrete certain enzymes and hormones and it becomes as semen now so until now we are calling as the sperms and the sperms when they are adding with the nutritive material then we call it as a semen and that is coming from the prostate gland and prostate gland also has a duct we call it as prostate duct the, these vas deferens joins with this prostate duct and they opens on the lateral sides of 18 segment and this is male genital pole 
the sperms will form in the testis and the whatever the release sperms are captured by the seminal funnel and it conducts through the seminal vesicule the, in seminal vesicule the spermatogonia matures into spermatozoa they travels down through this uh, vas deferens and with the addition of prostate secretion the semen comes out in lateral side sides of 18 segment so this is the male reproductive system the female reproductive system so there is in a 13 segment there is a balloon like structure these are called ovaries and they captured by of same funnel like structures we call it as ovida these are ovaries and the ovaries that they both unite and opens into the 14 segment in the middle of the ventral mid mid, mid ventral uh, opening this opening we call it as the female genital opening and if you see the lateral side we already seen on the 5th 6th 7th 8th sorry 6th 7th 8th and 9th segment there is a balloon like structures these are called the spermatotheca they open at 5 6 6 7 7 8 and 8 9 okay these are called the spermatotheal pores okay now this is all about the male and the female reproductive system and there are the spermatotheas okay so this now we'll understand the copulatory copulation so earthworms so they have juxta posture opposite mating juxta posture means when the both the ventral side even human beings also uh, we mate ventral side no ventral sides because the ventral side all the genitalia so open side the ventral side and these earthworms also they mate on the ventral side but opposite facing okay they exactly opposite side okay now what happens from 18 segment 18 segment so let me draw this you will understand much better this is the worm a this is the worm b <coughs> so for example this Okay, now what happens? So this is an opposite direction. Okay, one minute. Video is not visible. Is it okay now? Is it okay? Is it okay now? Yeah. 
now see one worm is uh, front to uh, th like this okay they are completely opposite direction so completely opposite the eating segment so they are having this male gen genital openings and 16 say sorry six segment seven eight nine so first they will deposits in the spermatothecal pore okay and it it will move and the next seven next year eight and nine so on it, it will fill all the spermatotheca okay in case of uh, earthworms the male gametes uh, matures first okay so that's the reason we call it as protandrous so moment they filled and this uh, worm b is having the worm a sperms now okay once they get filled the female uh, reproductive will start double, uh, maturating now now they release the uh, 14 segment here 11 I'll erase this 12 13 14 now whenever this the ovaries are released okay the the clitellum will get uh, loses out okay now this clitellum will come back okay from the worm and they will rub all these segments 9 8 7 6 now whenever it is rubbing the sperms also will come out okay now this clitellum will have now this is the clitellum will have the ovaries of bombi and the sperms which is came from worm a sperms of worm a okay now the clitellum will have this uh, the ovaries and sperms now now that's why we are all they always prefer the cross fertilization they though having the uh, both the gametes but they are crossing with other worm okay now the fertilization is cross fertilization the fertilization happens external fertilization is cross and external so moment it comes out it closes and this we call it as cocoon cocoon so after three weeks time it opens out and the tiny tiny earthworms will come out there is no larval stage they directly gives the younger ones there are around six to eight earthworms in every cocoon okay so it takes three weeks time so this is all about the earthworm we have seen all the interesting features we have seen external features we have seen the internal anatomy digestive system we have seen what we notice there is a gizzard structure we have started seeing that is there in eighth segment and there is a narrow stomach and the intestine is larger okay. there is an intestinal ck we have seen typosol all this thing there are glands are associated with the digestive system the pharyngeal glands and the inter uh, intestinal ck and they also helpful for the digestion and whatever coming the undigested food that is very useful for the farmers so we call them as the wormy cast uh, and that's the reason we describe as a friends of farmers okay the circulatory system is well developed there are many vessels there are two important vessels the dorsal vessel ventral vessel they connected with the hearts and we have seen many vessels which are arranged in the body of earthworm and respiration it happens through the skin and the excretory system we started seeing the nephridias or the structures the other phylums we have seen the flame cells solenocytes and the now we have started seeing the nephridia in case of aschihelminthes we described that metanephridia sorry uh, protonephridia and this structures here we, we have seen the nephridias 
okay there are three types of nephridia septal nephridia integumental nephridia and the pharyngeal nephridia okay in reproductive system we have seen the male and female gametes uh, started producing in the same worm but they always prefers the cross fertilization and the fertilization happens outside the body and we have seen how this first male sperms will deposits in the spermatotheca after depositing the female uh, reproductive organs are getting mature that's why that's why we call it as the protandrous okay now the cross fertilization happens the cocoon forms after 3 weeks 3 weeks 6 to 8 eggs worms are coming so it is very important for your neat and mse even for your ipu and it is very important aspect to understand uh, animal science much better you no know? we have seen certain important structures are developed in this uh, phylum okay the other phylum uh, other classes like nilis uh, palikita they have uh, very important structures so we'll see that so near is uh, it is also segmented segmented body but every segment there is a muscular extension which we call it as parapodia so they helpful for the respiration as well as the locomotion okay so let me draw a few more segments so they are like so every segment will have an extension we call it as parapodia and so anterior part okay anterior part has immature gonads okay and the posterior part has a mature gonads gonads they are having both immature and mature gonads and this having immature gonads on the anterior part we call it as atoki and having mature gonads we call it as epitoki so this kind of one single organism having both the immature gonads and the mature gonads we call them as api epitoki api epitoki is can be seen in the nidis okay and other uh, chiridenia class so best example is leech so there are two suckers are present in the leeches and with the help of suckers they the suck blood from animals and one more important point in leeches they do not have the setae we have seen the s shaped structure which is made by the chitin uh, that is not present in the leeches so that's the reason the leech always you know they will bend their body to stick here and again they will uh more like that sir so, this suckers are also helpful for gathering of the food and also for the locomotion okay the tissue which is filled in the leeches we call it as potriadal tissue so these are the important aspects